David said, I will not give anything to God that will not cost me. Worship without sacrifice is incomplete. I believe it's time for us to understand that it has to cost us something. Our time, our energy, and everything. Alabaster charm Here's my offering I pour my love on you My expensive Worship Alabaster jar Here's my offering I pour my love on you My expensive Worship Praise be to God. I greet you with Jesus' joy. Happy New Year to you and your family. May God prosper you. May God sustain you. May God lift you up in the name of Jesus. I'm still under the weather, but uh, I promise that we are going to spend some time together sharing some important things. And I feel that for the next 21 days or for the next uh, 20 days, the focus is going to be on some key things that I believe is very important. But let's pray. Father, you have brought us to the beginning of a new year. And there's nothing new to you, O oh God. And so we understand that we are still with you. And before you, do we submit our lives. We rededicate our life to Jesus Christ again. We re-strengthen our relationship with you once again. And we thank you that let not the storms of life overtake us. And we bless your name because you have always been faithful to the T. 
I pray for everybody on the side of my voice today that you will strengthen our lives. You empower us as we go forward. Let health and prosperity be our portion this year. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 All right. So, not to start off on a low key or anything, but the new year is actually only new to us. It's not new to anything else except us. But I guess it's important because we are the architecture of our destinies, so to speak. But the sun, the moon, and the stars, they don't see any difference between 31st and the 1st of January. There's no cosmic significance at all. Everything is flowing normal. Just like another day. But uh, I want to begin our 21 days or 30 days or whatever days we finish laying some critical foundation for life, I believe. And the first we want to tackle is the, the lack thereof of people's ability to eat from the word of God. A lot of people don't know how to eat from the word of God. And and that is a problem that we want to talk about. So I want to begin with that because I you remember I'm talking about how to do life, how to kind of shift your mindset on certain critical things. But before I do that, I feel that I got to get back to basis. So I want to just try my best and share with you how to eat from the word of God. Not the way I'm doing, like teaching or sharing my heart from verse to verse. Not at all. I want to kind of tell you how to eat God's word. A lot of people don't know how to eat it. Few people know, like to read it. And others just want to hear how their favorite preachers and teachers are kind of digesting it. But it's not to condemn anybody because you hardly find people showing you how to eat from the word of God. And so that's why I feel like for the first few days I want to do that. The psalmist said, Thy word have I, it says, Thy word is a lamp and a light. Lamp to my feet, a light to my path. And that's what I want to begin with. And the whole idea is to really show you practically how to eat from God's word. Because I believe it's important. How to eat from God's word. And that's what I want to begin on this phase to talk about. Now, the word of God is... Is uh, definitely is is a word of the Holy Spirit, authored by the Holy Spirit. So he does a lot of work in the digestion of the word. But the first thing I want to talk about today is what you bring to the word of God is what you take out of the word of God. What you bring to it is what you take out. And I I, I won't be very inspirational for this 30 days i'll be very practical i'll tell you a b c d that's kind of what i want to spend the first few days of the year doing so you have to bring certain things to the word of god and when you bring those things then you will be able to feed on the word of god but let me tell you why it's important to feed on the word of god because number one mental health comes as a result of feeding on the word of God. Mental health. You know what I'm scared of? My greatest fear is that as I live long enough, I'll be so mentally sick that I wouldn't know my left from my right. You say, what do you mean by that, Pastor Kwame? I mean that every time I turn around, the world is getting stupider by the second. 
and so i run quickly to god's word so that my mind can be calibrated quickly today i saw a five a 54 year old intentionally fall down on her carpet trying to create a tiktok video this is what i'm trying to say so every person from a child to 80 year old is trying to be a little bit uh funny i mean it has its place life is stressful you have to but everybody is all over the place simply because when the world keeps turning and turning and turning and turning we miss what is sane and what is insane and then the the, the lines get blurred and everything goes and we realize that where do i get a sound mind it is from those who eat from the word of god so my greatest fear is that if i live long enough mental disorder so mental disorder is not the same as the reference of losing your mind or being insane that's not what i'm referring to the mental disorder in this line is that you don't know the right way of looking at life that is because you are living as a product of the times and so the word of god is able to help you have a mind that is supposed to let me say it like this let me say it like this you know as a scientist we have to calibrate our balance and our equipment in the lab so that we get the correct um, results so there are standardized weights and standardized uh, uh, liquids and solids and other things that are kept in the right environment so that those don't degrade or those don't lose their standard measuring and once a while we will bring those weights out and we will use it to adjust all our balances because as you weigh them and weigh them they get weak and the strings get loose and so they are not measuring one milligram like you think it is that's what i mean by mental wellness so once you do life you see things here and there and you move up and down due to the garbage the devil is blinding people to do you might see things as normal when it's not normal if you don't go to the word of god you will not know so when i'm coming to the word of god i am so excited because i know that all the ideas i've picked up from wherever i watch it from the word of god is going to check me out and help me see things clearly all right so the word of god is important and unfortunately people don't know how to absorb it how to digest it how to take it in all right so that's what we're going to do today so if you don't eat the word of god chances are your mind is not reading well your mind is not processing life well you have bought into something else that is being your processor so the first thing you bring to the word of God, I said I'm going to be practical. The first thing you bring to the word of God is uh, a, a need to take something out. A need to take something out. When you open, like when I open the verse I'm reading today. And it says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. If that's all I read today, I have to make sure that I I get something out of this. You understand what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? What I mean, get something out of it. In other words, I don't want it to stay like a Bible. That is useless. If that is all I get, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It doesn't matter how spiritual I sound it is useless. I have to be able to take this and get something out of it. You understand what I mean? Whether squeeze it, boil it, uh, fry it, deep, whatever. I must take this word, process it in a way, and get something out of it for myself. 
Do you understand that? Right. And so how so first thing, if I come to the word of God saying that I have to take something out of it, it won't stay at the word of God level for me. I need to be able to glean something I can hold on to it. So if that becomes my question, then the first thing I'm saying is that now, what does it mean your word is a lamp to my feet? Then I say to myself, this has to be a figure of speech. It's a figurative pictorial word. And you might not have a lot of big, I mean, bigger tools you are bringing because there are different portions of scripture and different way of interpreting scriptures. We have, we have the poetry, you have the historical, we have the, we have the, um, the proverbia, you have all the other styles of Jewish writings that you can learn on a higher level with all of the other Bible tools that are out there, Bible dictionary and all of that. Those are there to help you digest it. But I'm talking about on a simple day-to-day basis, you want to say, your word is a lamp to my feet. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Uh, what does that mean to me? How do I eat this? I don't know how much you can eat this, but the first thing I can eat from this is that I don't know much about how this is, but I know that the word of God, the word of God is able to show me where I'm standing in life. You understand? And this doesn't do anything for you at the moment because it's just telling you a label on God's word. That word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path does not do anything for you, even if you understand that. You understand that? He's just describing what the word of God does. So with this, what is telling you, what I can eat from it is that I have to get into God's word more because it has something to do with the illumination of my standing. Now I'm eating something. So right now, I have taken a thought I have taken a mental seed that the word of God is able to show me where my feet is standing. And so now I I will have to somewhat find a way of going for the word of God. It's like somebody tell you, these people, they pay $18.75 an hour. It's just a thought. But when that thought sinks in, your desire to go there start increasing. So when the thought that the word of God is a lamp to my feet, when that thought comes into my head, it means that if I do well and stay with God's word, I will always be aware of where I'm standing. Now I'm eating something here. And so it will just nudge me closer to God's word more and more. So this is just advertising God's word, this verse. And it says now, it is a light also to my path. That means that if I stay, if I habitually stay with God's word, it will show me where to walk and where not to walk. Do you follow what I'm trying to say? Right? So right away, you've been able to eat this verse and you are now aware that if I actually draw closer to God's word time and time again the end result is that I will know where I'm standing and I will know how to walk in life you see that you have eaten it but you were able to eat it at this level because you came not just to read the Bible verse you came to ask yourself what can I do with this what is this doing for me what can I glean from it what can I digest from it this every Bible verse must do something for you if it's not doing anything for you then you are not eating it in the beginning God look at it say what is what are you understand what I'm saying so the first thing I want to tell you is this year you have to be able to eat God's word and the first tip to eat God's word is to come ready to eat it. And don't eat it unless you can digest it. Or don't read God's word and go. 
Do you understand that? The last thing on this first point is that you have to ask yourself, I read this passage. I'm not reading it just for the excitement. So everything you can read it for understanding, you can read it for information. Because if you get a simple translation, the word of God is very sweet and easy. It's like everyday language. But because it's God's word, you don't want to read it like that, like a, a newspaper or like a, a fiction or something. You, if you read a portion, you have to see, because it is life and death. The word of God is your life. The word of God is your mind. The word of God is your health. The word of God is your wellness. And so once you read a verse, you must be able to eat it and say to yourself, what can I take from this word? And you know, even by the time you come, don't read the Bible unless you need something. Don't read it as a responsibility. Don't read it as a... Uh, I didn't say that right, but let me clarify it. Don't read it as a New Year resolution. Don't read it as a, a challenge. Read it because you want to take something out of it. Read it because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So when you open the Bible, you are asking yourself, I am come here to withdraw for my life. Do you understand? I have come to this book to withdraw from my life. So when you open it, you are saying, what am I withdrawing from here? And what you withdraw will be a seed of a thought. What you withdraw will be an illumination for adoption. What you withdraw will be a clarity of understanding. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that is what I want to share with you. First thing, when you enter into God's word, when you read it, ask yourself, what is this? What can I do with this? And if it's giving you an information, then it's okay. This information, I need to now apply to my thinking and to my way of doing things. When you read the word of God, always ask yourself, what can I do with this? Or how do I use this? And if you do that, you realize that you are becoming what is written of you. You understand what I'm saying? So those are the kind of things we'll be sharing for the first few days. And I hope that it will be a blessing. But I felt I have to tell you a little bit of how to eat word of, of the word of God. And so we're going to do that tomorrow and the next day after. Just how do I eat God's word? And as we go forward, I will give you tools on how to eat God's word. This is very important. It's not for only inspiration. It's not only for, it is for transformation. But it comes only if you can eat it. Amen. Father, your word is indeed a light and a lamp. Help us to eat it that we may grow thereby. Amen. Amen.